tonight in the second part of my interview with Mrs. Odushote, the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment in Nigeria. She shares about the inspiring work she and her husband does with married couples and their conviction that no marriage is too bad for God to restore. Tonight on James Talk Africa. But before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Magadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. Hi there, I'm Chim Onyebilama, your host. Thanks for joining us today. Today we'll be going into the second part of my interview with Mrs. Odushote, the Permanent Secretary for the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment in Nigeria. And I will be talking about the ministry to married couple that she and her husband has. But before we do that, let me share with you something that has been on my heart a lot. My heart has been heavy about the need for a revival of holiness and power in our churches all across the continent. I feel that God wants to use his church in Africa to transform this continent and beyond. But it's not through our size or our riches or our numbers that our impact is going to come. No, no, no. It's through the power of righteousness. We are the salt of this continent, but without our saltiness, which is uh, the manifestation of the nature of Christ, the in holiness and power, we're useless. The volume or color of salt does not matter at all for impact. It is, it has no, if it has no saltiness. I'm personally looking at the mirror and I'm praying for myself as it feels like we have become too used to lawlessness in our midst. Of course, we're living in the, in the times the Bible refers to as the last days. And there is the, what the Bible calls the secret power of lawlessness walking in our midst. Paul prophesied about this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. He said, the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so till he's taken out of the way, referring to the Holy Spirit's work in restraining. You see, it takes God's help to see evil for what it is. For example, we may say that we appreciate the earth's vastness while standing on it, but it takes rising above the earth to really see how vast it is. So, so, so to sin, a man may know that he's a sinner, but it takes encountering God for him to really begin to see sin as sin. The more we draw close to God, the more we will be repulsed by sin because we will increasingly see it as it is. We, we need today what Paul talked about in Romans chapter 7 verse 13, that sin might be recognized as sin so that sin might become utterly sinful. That is why one of the ways a person's intimacy with God can be judged is by his attitude to sin. The more intimate a man is with God, the more his hatred for sin. We need God to open our eyes to the sinfulness of sin and the ways that work in the world and also in the church even now. What Paul calls the secret power of lawlessness is the determined work of lawlessness that is causing decay in societies, in families, in men, destroying all that is good so that they may not be able to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. You, you see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, they, we see there the twin attack that the devil is using on our day. He's, first of all, he's opposing godliness and exalting himself. These days, in the name of modernism and liberty, the devil is making subjects like holiness, consecration, purity, unattractive, even within the church. At the same time, he's making sin very attractive. The church is increasingly becoming much like the world. Many of us have today lowered our standard from what they used to be. We're not living what we know we should be be. All this is so subtle that if we are not careful, we'll be overpowered by it and reap decay even in our own very lives. We must be aware. The most important thing in life is not to accomplish great things for God, but to rather live holy lives unspotted by the world so that we may please God. Watch out. And no matter what happens, don't let the decay, this decay of lawlessness eat up your life or your relationship with others. I challenge you to examine your life and to come against every manifestation of this secret 
secret power of lawlessness. The only thing that can restrain this work of lawlessness in our lives and in the church is the work of the Holy Spirit. How we need to walk and walk with him, not only to save ourselves, but also to become salt to the world around us, so as to save others from this decay. It's time to straighten out our lives, friends. Let us straighten out our work with God and our relationship with others. Let us pray. Father, you are challenging us. You are calling us away from the crowd. You're calling us away from the mess around us. You are challenging us not to excuse our sin. You're, you're calling us to turn to you and reignite in our life again a passion, a hunger for you, a hunger for holiness, a, a, a work of purity. Lord, we want this. I pray for myself. I pray for every single person watching me now that God, they might begin to reach out to you. They might begin to press into you. They, they might begin to throw away their excuses for why they're living lower than what you call them to and begin to press into you and give your their whole heart to you. I pray, oh God, that, Lord, you will restore those who are backsliding. You will stir up the flames of your spirit in the lives of those who have gone cold. You will put a hatred in our hearts for sin, for lawlessness. Father, where we have just followed the crowd and done what everybody else around us is doing, that we might come to a place where we are saying, others may, but I cannot. And, Lord, we might turn our gaze to you and refuse to be like everybody, even not like every other Christian and be willing to be different. Thank you, Lord, because you're working in our life. You're restoring us. You're making us alive to you. You're making us the salt and light that can bring hope to this continent. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, please, if you have questions about what I've said, just feel free to contact us on the numbers on your screen and uh, we would like to chat with you. We would like to pray for you. We would like to help you spiritually, whichever way we can. Now let's go to the second part of my interview with Mrs. Odushote. And I, I just love her passion and the practical things she tells us about this issue of relationship and marriage. And she's going to be praying for all of you uh, who are either married or hoping to be married. Please don't go away. We will go right to that interview now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for that warm welcome. And welcome to the second part of this interview with Reverend Mrs. Ibukun Odushote, who is the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment in Nigeria. You have a work you do among for marriages. Yes. And uh, it is something that is very close to your heart. I'm, I'm excited to say something about that any day. No, no, let, let's talk about that. How did this start for you? What Actually, was it started long before I even got married. Well, tell us about it. My parents, they were not Christians until very late in their lives, but they were an example of a couple. Yeah. You, you wouldn't, my, my father, you wouldn't, they are both late now. You wouldn't find my father fighting with my mom, mm. despite the fact that they have all kinds of things to quarrel about. Differences, yeah. They had all kinds of things to say, but daddy would say, mm. When you know your partner, you don't need to worry yourself. Mm. You just allow mm. the person mm. to do that. And that's how they ran through their life. So it was an attraction to mm. me that I wanted people to have marriages. And particularly when we were living in a very uh, remote, uh, you know, where you have so many people living together, uh, in Ori, Lego, yeah, Muin, Lagos, yeah. and we had no neighbors. There was a, a particular couple that was in the next house to us. The, the houses are closely packed together. Yeah. And we were hearing noises in the middle of the night. They were fighting, they were struggling, mm. they were shouting. And these were people that we felt were excited when they got married. Yes, Young there was couple at that time. Yeah. Everything was exciting for them. But by the time it was morning, they had to rush the lady to the hospital. Wow. And then at the end of the day, she was gone. Wow. So that was 
painful for us. We didn't like it at all. From that moment, I just took it upon myself. Anyone that I see, any young person that wants to get married, are you sure you know this man? Are you sure you do this? So I started Young Intending Couples Fellowship. Even, I was, even before marriage, I wasn't yeah. married. Mm. I wasn't even engaged. Oh, you weren't engaged. even married then? Okay. I wasn't engaged. You were busy preparing people for marriage even before you were married. Okay. Are you sure of this man? What has God told you about this man? I would, in some cases, I went by myself to do background check, check. on somebody that wants to get married to a wow. sister that I know. And you as that, a single uh, then? Okay. This one, you shouldn't marry. This one, yes, you can go ahead and marry. And people respected it because things that I said came to pass. Okay. So they, they obeyed it. And when I eventually met my husband and we started to court, we saw that we had the same passion. Okay. So as an intending couple ourselves, we were meeting with many other intending couples. Okay. And we were advising, we were saying this, we were saying that. So you will find people calling us daddy and mommy that maybe we are three years older than them mm. or two <laughs> years older than them. But because of the experience yeah, that we shared with them, their life, okay? I can share one particular Please one. Go on. We just got married. We were, we were just like one year or so in marriage. And a friend of ours, a sister, wanted to get married to this brother good-looking brother, fine brother, uh, also from fellowship, from the church and everything. But he was in a hurry. He said that, no, 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 they must go to court next week. They must do this. He wants to travel abroad. And traveling abroad, incidentally, he wanted to go to South Africa. <laughs> he wanted to go abroad and that he wanted the sister to be married to him so that he would be so able to take him there as a wife. We said, no, that's not about the marriage. If you're interested in the marriage, you take it easy. You go through, we always say that you go through the three sec, the, the, the full cycle of seasons before you get married before you get married the seasons what you must go okay. through uh, summer you must go through autumn you must go through winter you must go through spring that is that's a four seasons the four seasons. seasons you know what we're going to do we're going to take a break now when we come back you tell us what exactly these four seasons are uh, don't let the steam go away mm -hmm. their viewers at home our audience here we will take a short break and when we come back we we'll want to hear what these four seasons are don't go away <laughs> Hi there, this program is made possible by the generous donations of people like you who believe in our vision. Our passion is to be Christ-centered as well as Afrocentric as we discuss the issues that face us in Africa so as to equip and challenge African believers like you to be salt and light right in their neighborhood. Your gifts to this ministry can make a huge difference. I encourage you to prayerfully consider partnering with us today. Please go to our website to find out how you can give to Today. Thank you in advance for your support. Wow, wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the second part of my interview. We were stopped when we talked about the four seasons. Four seasons. You said there are these four seasons that you insist that those who want to get married should observe before they go out, go into it. Could you tell us what those four seasons are? When we talk about uh, spring, spring is a time when things are changing. You're changing from winter, chronic winter, and you begin to see flowers sprouting. You begin to see things happening. There are some people that have allergies that automatically, when it is springtime, allergies begin to show. So you'll be able to know how to react. I'm talking about spiritual allergies. Mm. I'm talking about physical allergies. Mm. And then people will be able to know this season, this is how it is with this person. When you talk about winter, winter is a time of, that is like, it's, it's hostility. Mm. It's cold. Mm. It's terrible. Mm. You, you really cannot do much mm. except things that you can do in-house. Yeah. And to go out, to, to walk on the snow, to do this, to do that. I know that in Africa there's no snow. Yeah. But I'm talking except about situations. I'm talking about situations that can confront you that is 
very hostile. Yeah. So you're talking about passing through tough seasons. Tough seasons. seasons. So the first one is passing through seasons that expose your allergies. Your allergies. Things that will the way expose, you react to the way you things. React, the, and then you talking about couples you wait till they pass through tough seasons, tough seasons. so that they can see how the person behaves when he's restrained yes. and he's into a confined. Okay, go on. We have had situations that um, couples that are caught in, caught in, they have not started anything, yeah. that when they get to such terrible situations, yeah. difficult situations, you find the brother reach out his hands and, and give the sister a dirty uh, slap. slap. And the sister says, oh, he was just upset Said at that time. Those doctor. are bad signs. What would you tell the lady? Uh, I would tell, tell that her? lady, you need to watch out. You may not be able to marry this yeah, guy. Because, because this guy sign. is going to get you beaten several times. times. If you can and, do this now. And it has happened yeah. many times. So some people excuse that at that stage yes, and say, well, it's because just... Because they are still so still much in love. love they are so excited. And so they excuse so it they, as to they a cover bad it. thing, okay? But we get it exposed. Mm. And the moment we get it exposed, we begin to address it. So it's not good to just rush into marriage. No. It is no. better to let the seasons flow. What are the other two seasons? The other seasons are the seasons, like uh, we're talking about summer. Everything, everything is, is nice. good. With there's business, the man is good, he has a car, he has a house, everything is just flowing well. Yeah. So you have an impression that that is how it is yeah. all of the time. Is it a good well, season also to it's test? It's a good season to test because if he has all things, there's a tendency that some other sisters are interested yeah. in him and then you want to watch how he behaves. How does he handle good times? Good times. Okay. And then you also have when you are preparing for uh, for winter, yeah. that's autumn. autumn. Immediately after summer, when everything is so good mm. and everything, all of a sudden he loses his job. Yeah. When he loses his job, mm. how does he react? But what does happens he when get, the changes yes. come? Yeah. Does he now say, yes, mm. it's, it's not your fault. It's mm. because I don't have my job. Mm. It's not your fault. If the sister does this, it's not your fault. And you start with that. Mm. You know that there are warning signs. That so are basically telling. you want to help couples to give it some time to know yes, each other at least and to, to know, know how a people little in the bit. different places. As you help marriages, what have you seen as sometimes you will say this is the one thing in the center of most of the problems we have? One communication. Poor communication. And then our culture. Mm. So our we carry culture, a lot of our culture our into Our culture marriage. interrupts so many things. So our, and. Um, they stand in between us and the will of the Father. We don't, because we our don't, emphasis is that you want to make sure that the word of God is a bedrock of your marriage. Not your tradition. Not tradition, not the way my family does it. That, not the way my know, people do it. Somebody tells me that I get annoyed, but anger is just a part of our, mar yeah. of our family. You cook a pot of stew. A lady cooked a pot of stew because the husband misbehaved. Put the whole pot of stew on top of the on man. On the husband. <laughs> on top of the man. And she said that's the way her family he behaves. Said, yeah, it's, it's not really anything serious. It's just we just have anger in our family. Uh, uh, uh. That anger must get out of yes. the family. And I can tell you, they are still together today. Praise God. Why? Because they believed that that can happen. Praise God. Praise God. So there is hope for marriages that are even oh, very, yeah. that are in a bad place where the pot of soup has been poured on the back. Yes. There is still hope. There is hope. There is still hope. There's and this, hope. Is, this is what you work with. It's not just getting marriages ready, no. but getting mad, bad marriages, marriages better. Marriages in order. What do you normally do? What, do, what would you normally we pray. do? pray. We, we have seasons of times with people. We pray with them. We share with them. You counsel, we go out yeah, with them. Yeah. We, we house them. So you when actually we, basically mentor them. We mentor. You don't just uh, prescribe. You Even actually... marriages that are much older than us, in, in terms of the age of the people mm. that are older than us, we still mentor them. Mm. And we find, it, we find it quite fulfilling, mm. uh, the way God works with us. Because we don't just work with them. We now spend time in God's presence. And I'm sure you were asking, how am I going to be keeping all these yeah. times? And 
all these things that we do. That's one thing that we rely so much on the God of heaven. I want to encourage anyone mm. in any situation whatsoever that there is no situation that the God that we serve cannot turn, turn around. around. Yeah. He turns around and I know that my ministry is a ministry of turning, turning around. around. Turn around for good. good. That you can be at the lowest level mm. and in the next minute the God that we serve yeah. can raise you up Hallelujah. and take you right up there. Amen. So, and if people are out there, their marriages are vicious, it, it, must, it shouldn't stop. Mm. God would come in the midst of it and that marriage will continue and it will continue Amen. for good. Amen. The contacts that we have with such people has been contacts that, I, I must tell you, yeah, please. I've, been, I've been in a situation that I helped a lady to pack her things out of her husband's house. Yeah, because of abuse. Be, yes, yeah. because yeah. that has happened yeah. and we are so scared. Mm. I don't want she that girl to die. Yeah. Because the man is a policeman uh, and he carries guns. An arm, okay. And at any time, he could do anything yes, yes. because of the way he was yeah. behaving. So I'm not saying that it is all rosy, rosy all of the time. Yeah. No, we have situations mm. that we could not just do mm, something yeah. about. But more often than not, mm. I can even say like 95% mm. of our interactions with people and everything has taken them from zero to here. Amen, amen. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know what I want you, what I want you to do is to look into the camera and pray for the viewers and okay. pray for the audience. Some are not married, some are married, and some are, we're all in different situations. I want you to pray that prayer of a reversal, okay. that God will bring a turn around. Let's pray. So shall we pray? Mm. The God of Nigeria mm. is the same God of America, mm. is the God of South mm. Africa, he is the God that is the God of all nations. Yes. God of our fathers, God mm. of Abraham, mm. Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. I pray at this moment mm. for everyone that is watching mm. us at this time. Mm. I ask Jehovah God that all these ones that are looking up unto you for one thing or the other, I begin to speak unto you mm. that the power of the Lord Jesus mm. Christ, the power that raised up Jesus, Jesus, we quicken your marriages. Yeah. We quicken your life. Amen. Whatever it is that you have waited for for so long, mm. I cause the doors to be opened unto name. you in the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus. I pray particularly for people that are trusting God for their own partners. Yes. People that are lonely. Mm. People that are looking that, mm. oh God, when will my turn come? Mm. When will my marriage come? Mm. I release you unto marriage. Yes. I release you for marriage. Yes. Whatever it is that is the veil over your face. Mm. That is the veil over your mm. eyes. I take them off right now mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I cause you to be in contact with the man that God has provided for you. Amen. With the woman that God has provided for you. Amen. And there will be no mistakes. Amen. There will be no error. Amen. I pray for marriages that are trusting God for fruits of the womb. Mm. Looking up unto God for children. Mm. The God of our fathers, you will cause the wombs to open yes. and you will cause them to bear their Amen. own children. You will open doors unto them mm. and the blessings will abide forever. Amen. You said the blessings of the Lord, it make her rich mm. and it adds no sorrow. Yes, no Lord. sorrow will come with yes, your children Lord. in the name of Amen. Jesus. Father, we thank, thank you. you Jesus. As many as are watching us, mm. that you will go from whatever level you thought you yes, were and yes. you will go right up there in and Jesus you will rejoice Amen. by reason of the prayer that we have prayed yes. because we have prayed with thanksgiving and with faith in yeah. Christ Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. That was Amen. good. That was good. That was good. And as you watch at home, I want you to receive that by faith. Contact us on the numbers on the screen, uh, whether the website or the number you see there by WhatsApp. We want to know what God has done for you and how we can help you further. And if you want some of the resources that are available through Reverend uh, Mrs. Odushote's ministry, please let us know. I want to know if there's an audience who member who has a question. And uh, before we land, uh, please, can I see the hands? All right, thank you very much, sir. My name is Mr. Bodoy. My number one question goes to Madam. The question is on the woman you asked to pack out from her husband's house. 
Were you able to fix back the marriage as it is your goal? Can you go ahead and reply? Uh, we couldn't solve the, the problem of that marriage, and it was obvious that there was no marriage in the first instance. Mm. That's why we could do that. Because we later discovered that the man had had a relationship before that marriage. Mm. So it was obvious that it was, mm. it, it was totally mm. null and void. Mm. So bringing her out of it eventually was like, Mm. The necessary mm. thing that so would still happen. There were extramarital affairs. There were extramarital yeah. affairs. Yeah. And in, in fact, mm. after that, the man had given birth to another child mm. somewhere. In and secret, we are, yeah. Yes, and we are, we are seeing it on Facebook. Mm. We are seeing different kinds of things. Mm. So there was really no marriage. That's, that's really mm. good. Now, uh, we go to the second question over there. Uh, can you go ahead and ask your questions? OK, thank you very much, Ma. Um, I wanted to ask, during courtship, sometimes people tend to pretend and act all prim and proper, and then during marriage they change. Is there a way or a, or a method to identify people who do such things? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say that would happen to anybody. Um, the first test is how much of the Holy Spirit do you have? as a person, because the Holy Spirit reveals all things to us. Sometimes that sounds spiritual, mm. that uh, somebody can still pretend and be able to get away with it. One of the things that we have said is that seasons also help you to be able to know Those four seasons you talked about. The four yeah. seasons, the four different kinds of temperaments that you will see of a man in, in, in action. They show up in, in a whole year if you are sincere and you are searching and you are asking God for whatever you are doing, it's, it's likely you'll be able to get some of these signs that will tell you that there's danger here or there's danger there. But beyond that, that's the much that you can do sometimes despite all that. Some people have put in all that. The man comes in and it changes to be something else. But because God is with you, God is able to do, to work on that person and have a transformation yet again right inside the home. We have many examples of that, that the man will come back, you know, somebody that you thought was very spiritual and everything, and he, he begins to drink alcohol so much, he gets drunk, he comes home in the night and you are wondering, where did I find mm. this man? What kind of a human being is this? And then after a while of waiting upon God, of praying, of holding hands and everything with people that are dedicated, I'm also very emphatic about prayer partners. A mm. couple should also have a couple prayer partner that you are praying together. So if you have prayed and you have done all that, there was a day that this man came back home, crawling on the floor, crying and begging my wife, I don't know what happened to me. I don't know what this is. I don't know that. And he repented and they, they, they reconciled and things began to go well for mm. them. So I don't pray that we get into such troubles, but if they come, what we need is the most high God mm. to help us out of situations. But more often than not, if you obey the rules, if you follow the seasons, and if you are sincere in what you are doing, you will get to know the signs before you get to the marriage. Amen. Thank you so mm. much. Thank you so much. So this is where we'll be landing it, and we want to say a big thank you to Mrs. Ibukun Odushote, who is the permanent secretary at the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment. We call it sometimes Ministry of Favor. Ministry uh, of what? Favor. Favor, why? Uh, because <laughs> God turns all our labors into favor. Okay, instead of labor, is a ministry of favor. <laughs> okay, so she is the minister. She is the private secretary. secretary in the minister of, uh, ministry of favor. And that's where we'll sign off. And let that favor go to both our viewers at home and our audience here in the studio. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll come back and wrap up later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. It's time to say bye-bye. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll be here, same time, same station. And we'd love to hear from you. Please contact us. God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye. 
please like this video and leave a comment below let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else